meeting. Uh, this is the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting for Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. Uh, we're limiting physical access in the meeting room due to the current locations on public gatherings, and we've made accommodations for the public. Here's the way you can participate. You can go to the City of Franklin Facebook and YouTube accounts, or you can call into the conference meeting number at 312-626-6799 with a meeting ID of 918-4695-6279 with a passcode of 976721. Callers will be unmuted, given an opportunity to comment during the meeting at specific times. There is limited viewing available at City Hall. Uh, the public may make comments and questions prior to 3.30 p.m. on the day of the meeting at, to recorder at franklinten.gov to be read aloud. Those comments will be limited to uh, two minutes. Uh, you can also, here, here are the links you need, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash city of Franklin or facebook.com forward slash city of Franklin or the city website franklintn.gov forward slash uh, Franklin TV dash t Franklin dash TV. Uh, we are called to order. I'm going to call the roll. Alderman Barnhill. Present. Alderman Martin. Present. Alderman Schroer. Present. Alderman Speedy. Present. Alderman McClendon. Present. Alderman Blanton. Present. Alderman Peterson. Present. And Vice Mayor Berger. Present. Thank you. Everybody's here tonight. We'll start out with the invocation given by Alderman Berg, I mean, uh, Alderman uh, Barnhill, and then I'll lead the pledge. So if you'll join me in standing for those. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in prayer. Thank you for this opportunity that you afford us that uh, gives us an avenue to speak to you. We ask that your blessings upon the, our world leaders, our national leaders. We know that this country and this nation is going through some extremely difficult times. We ask your blessings upon them as they make decisions that affect the nation and ultimately individually affect us. We also ask your blessings upon the first responders that um, protect our freedoms, protect our uh, homeland, we ask that you be with them. We know that there are difficult times there also in separation of families. And Heavenly Father, especially we ask your blessings upon this board, the decisions we make that ultimately affect the direction in which the city will go. Give us spiritual wisdom and guidance. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Item one on the agenda is resolution 2021-67, a resolution declaring the Board of Mayor and Alderman members shall meet April 27th, 2021 conduct its essential business by electronic means rather than being required to gather a quorum of the members physically present at the same location as it is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID outbreak. Is there a motion? So move. Thank you, Alderman Barnhill. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman Schroer. Any discussion? Seeing none, ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Martin. Yes. Alderman Schroer. Yes. Alderman Speedy. Yes. Alderman McClendon. Yes. Uh, Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. And Vice Mayor Berger. Yes. Passes unanimously. Now is an opportunity for citizens to make comments on items that are not on the agenda. Now, do we have any uh, emails or anybody on the line tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, communication from the Williamson County Commission. I have nothing from them tonight. And we'll go to approval of the minutes from the April 13th work session and the April 13th Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you, Alderman uh, Schroer, and seconded by Alderman Peterson. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. 
Yes. Alderman Martin. Yes. Alderman Schroer. Yes. Alderman Speedy. Yes. Alderman McClendon. Yes. Thank you. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. And Vice Mayor Berger. Yes. Thank you. Passes unanimously. We'll now go on to uh, proclamation tonight. We have three different proclamations, and the uh, third, first one has to do with National Therapy Animal Day. And to, tonight we have with us Katie, who is a Cardigan Welsh Corgi, and her owner, Geralda Aubrey. So uh, I'm going to stand up and read this if it's okay. And you can come forward so you can be on camera. It's nice to see people. Yes. So, uh, can you, can you yeah, I bet. Well, here's the proclamation. Whereas Pet Partners is designed, a, designated April 30th as National Therapy Animal Day, and whereas therapy animal members of Music City Pet Partners play an essential role in improving human health and well being through the human animal bond, and whereas therapy animal teams make thousands of visits per year in settings such as hospitals, nursing homes, schools, and hospice, and whereas therapy animal Teams interact with a variety of people in our community, including veterans, seniors, patients, students facing literacy challenges, and those approaching end of life. And whereas these exceptional therapy animals who partner with their human companions bring comfort and healing to those in need. Now, therefore, I, Dr. Ken Moore, Mayor of the City of Franklin, do, by, do hereby proclaim April 30th, 2021, as National Therapy Animal Day, and I encourage our citizens to celebrate it also. So thank you for coming, and uh, particularly, you, Katie, thank you for coming. Congratulations. Well, and she is enjoying being out amongst people. I bet. They were able to do that much in the last Thank you. We always enjoy you coming. Thank you. Take a picture, Mr. Mayor. We'd like to see the dog. Oh, uh, <laughs> we couldn't see anything. We have one. Oh, we couldn't. Well, no. I think uh, Angie took a picture of the, We have, uh, we have photos oh. and uh, the cable channel. You can see it on the wide shot. Uh, the next proclamation has to do with Municipal Clerks Week. And whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world and is the oldest among public servants. Whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at the other levels. And whereas professional, professional municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all. And whereas the professional municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community. And whereas professional municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of professional municipal clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations. And where it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk. Now, therefore, I, Dr. Campbell, Mayor of Franklin, Tennessee, do recognize the week of May the 2nd through May the 8th, 2021, as Professional Municipal Clerks Week and further extend appreciation to our professional clerks, recorders for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. Wow, congratulations. Thank you, sir. And to those professional clerks that are watching 
watching. Thank you. And the last proclamation uh, is per Public Service Recognition Week. And whereas Americans are served every single day by public servants at the federal, state, county, and city levels, these unsung heroes do the work they keep that keeps our nation working. Whereas public employees take not only jobs, but oaths, whereas many public servants, including military personnel, police officers, firefighters, border patrol officers, embassy employees, healthcare professionals, and others risk their lives each day in service to the people of the United States and around the world. And whereas the public employees of the city of Franklin are committed to exhibiting the highest standards of professional excellence, creativity, skill, and customer service, and whereas public servants include teachers, doctors, and scientists, train conductors, and astronauts, nurses, and safety inspectors, laborers, computer technicians, and social works, and countless other occupations, day in and day out, they provide the diverse services demanded by the American people of their government with efficiency and integrity. And whereas the city of Franklin recognizes the generous contributions of time and talent by public employees and community volunteers and the importance of the services they render. Now, therefore, I, Dr. Ken Moore, Mayor of the City of Franklin, do hereby proclaim May 2nd through 8th as Public Service Recognition Week. Let's give them a hand. Okay. That's all the proclamations and We'll now go to some miscellaneous reports and uh, an important issue to bring up tonight uh, has to do with the uh, governor's orders today and uh, as to electronic meetings. And I'm gonna ask Mr. Stuckey to describe what that process will be moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've, I've actually three things I want to touch on. I'll start with that uh, being uh, the the governor had issued over the last year a series of executive orders, one of which uh, dealt with the ability of local governments and, and other elected bodies to operate through virtual or electronic means. Um, that will expire as of Thursday of this week. So that means moving forward, we'll be back to in-person meetings. We've already made some physical adjustments here at City Hall in the boardroom. I'll touch on some big picture components of that just so that people understand how we're moving forward. And I welcome any questions or comments you have um, that we can work on. We'll, we'll share with the board uh, some more specifics in the next week uh, about what that'll look like on the 11th of May when we next meet. But uh, essentially, Couple, couple guiding principles or a couple key components. We'll be meeting in this room on the dais for both the work session and the voting session. Uh, that basically is because we've got some extra distance the way the dais is laid out. We've already got plexiglass dividers throughout this room to provide some additional uh, distancing or protection that way. We've got the, uh, the podium has already got an encasement with plexiglass. So there are a number of things that we've already put in place we can take advantage of we would provide limited seating in the boardroom. Uh, there'd be, you are, if you've been in here, you've seen that there are rows that are cordoned off and rows that are open for seating and, and seats that are designated to sit in versus to provide some spacing. Uh, so we, we've got that. So that does provide a limited number, not the full capacity of this room, obviously. But we can also provide seating throughout the large corridor that runs down City Hall. There are four separate monitors along that hallway that can provide the ability to watch the meeting and then come in here for public comment uh, and uh, to participate in that way. You can also have seating available if you need it in the training room. And again, provide a video feed so that folks can watch it live and participate in the meeting um, you know, as they need to with public comment or whatever there might be and have them physically come in here for public comments if they're not already in the room. So those are some, some basic components of what we're looking at. Um, again, if you've got specific questions, comments, suggestions, I just ask that you forward those to myself or Angie or Linnea uh, over the next few days. And like I said, we'll, we'll probably within either by the end of the week or first of next, send you out sort of an outline that covers those details and maybe a few others uh, as we move forward. So uh, we wanna make sure we're still providing accommodations to the public to fully participate. 
to hear our meetings, participate in our meetings. Uh, you will need to physically be here in, in order for your vote to count. Uh, but we have, I think we've put already some things in place that will help that happen, help that happen in a way that you'll be comfortable with and feel safe with. And um, we look forward to seeing everybody in the same room and being together again. So uh, one thing you will, you will miss the lengthy introductions and voting about electronic meetings. You won't have those anymore. But I do want to take a moment as, as we talked about public service recognition and municipal clerks week and those elements. Uh, I really want to thank uh, Angie, Linnea, Michael, uh, our IT team, all of whom really sprung into action to really make this happen with not a lot of lead time uh, a little over a year ago. And, and for you all, for your patience and your uh, adaptability as we work through this, because we've really, I, I think, make it, made it work pretty well. Um, but we'll be glad to get back in person and have those opportunities to interact in that way. So uh, just share that with you so you know what's coming and the public has a sense of what's coming. They'll still be able to view the meetings uh, on live feed through social media, through Franklin TV, uh, but participation, if you wanna speak to the board, will largely come through in person and we'll look at how we handle email and other communications as we go forward. So just share that with you. Uh, I do want to take a minute to, to thank our team who are a dedicated group of public servants. Uh, I feel strongly about that every year, but particularly this year uh, with what you've seen everyone have to do in the last 12 months to continue to serve at a high level. It, it just makes you proud to see the work and the effort that's gone into it. And so it's worthy of our recognition and thanks. So just want to share that from a personal standpoint. And it needs to be said that tomorrow at 11 o'clock is the state of the city. The mayor will be delivering that. We're doing it in person as well at the amphitheater at Franklin Park. Uh, and, and that seating has already, uh, we have about 150 people we can accommodate there. That seating has actually already been uh, spoken for. So we open that up to the public and those, are, those seats have been taken, but we'll also be broadcasting it live feed on Facebook Live through the city's uh, Facebook page. So folks can see it there. And of course it'll be broadcast and rebroadcast uh, through uh, Franklin TV and also be available on our various social media feeds. So that's what I have for you uh, this evening, Mayor, and thanks everybody. <coughs> okay, new day is dawning. We'll move on the consent agenda. Mayor, Mayor. Yes, sir, Alderman McClendon. Uh, under miscellaneous reports, I would like to announce tonight that I will not be seeking re-election to the Board of Mayor and Alderman in October. You've taken my breath away many times with comments, Alderman McClendon, uh, but this one catches me by great surprise. Uh, and I hope we'll have plenty of time to recognize you adequately for the services you've rendered to the city and the citizens of Franklin uh, with honor and dignity. Um, it's been an honor. I'm sure everybody would agree to serve with you, uh, but we're going to get some work out of you before October. So <laughs> get your bootstraps on and we're going to keep working. So thank you for your service and thank you for that announcement. Uh, the consent agenda tonight is uh, deemed to be non-controversial non and routine in nature by the governing body and will be approved as recommended by committee or staff by one motion of the governing body. Tonight, we're considering items number seven through 11, and I would consider a motion. Move approval. Thank yes. you, Alderman. And thank you, Alderman Martin, for seconding it. Any discussions? Seeing none, ready to vote. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Martin. Yes. Alderman Schroer. Yes. Alderman Speedy. Yes. Alderman McClendon. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. And Vice Mayor Berger. Yes. Passes unanimously. Uh, the next item um, is item six, which is new business, consideration resolution 2021-74, declaring the intent of the city of Franklin to reimburse itself 
in a not to exceed amount of $30 million for certain project expenditures with the proceeds of water and sewer revenue bonds, notes, or other debt obligations to be issued by the city. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Alderman Schroer. Is there a second? Second, and uh, I also think Eric should make several comments on this right here, or someone. Yeah. Thank you. Second by Alderman Barnhill. Uh, ready for discussion. And uh, I, I think you want an explanation of what we're doing so it's clear to the public and also to the I board. Think, Is that correct? I, I'm, I'm clear as to what we're doing. I think we need to make sure that the public understands why we're uh, a resolution of intent, $30 million. So if uh, Eric wants to do that or Christine, either one, whichever one we want to do, but that needs to be covered uh, pretty thoroughly. Uh, I'll ask Mr. Stuckey because he's nodded his head. He's ready to do that. And uh, go ahead, Mr. Stuckey. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, this this essentially sets in place uh, the eligibility for us to reimburse ourselves for costs should we need to issue um, uh, revenue bonds related to our wastewater or ro water reclamation uh, plant project. Uh, as you know, that is a hundred and fifty plus million dollar project. We have been fortunate in that we have secured uh, approximately a hundred million dollars of state revolving loan funds. 30-year uh, uh, loan at a, at a very low, very attractive interest rate. Uh, we estimate that's save, that will save us somewhere around $30 million right there from what we would have had to spend in interest or borrowing costs had we gone to the traditional bond market. Um, so that's all positive. Uh, we are hopeful the project has qualified. Our rates has, have been deemed as sufficient to support um, a, a, an additional 30 million from the state revolving loan fund. We are on the list. We are in a place that we believe very likely could, could generate that additional loan or some portion of that loan from state revolving loan fund, but we don't know that for certain. So we're setting this in place to just have the process moving in case we need to use it. Uh, since this was discussed at budget and finance a couple weeks ago, Christine, the mayor, and myself have had the opportunity to speak to some folks in the comptroller's office uh, and, and have gotten some additional information. Uh, we are on the fiscal 21 year list, which is good. Um, they are still finishing up some things from the fiscal 20 list. We're meeting with, uh, with folks uh, who administer the program here in another week and a half uh, that we believe will help us get more clarity uh, but we're continuing to have conversations with the appropriate people in the state to understand where we are and we should be in a position to to know um, as we 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 need those funds uh, we are we we do have cash that we're using as cash funding in the project from uh, water and sewer impact fees that were collected um, but we uh, and that helps us work through this process but we are are, are working to get a very specific timeline identified um, and, and we'll keep you informed as we have further discussions. So this really provides for it, puts it in place, um, has you designate that, that, that those costs could be eligible for reimbursement should we need to issue bonds in some amount up to $30 million. But uh, that may not be necessary, but felt it was appropriate to go ahead and have the board take this action so that this step was at least in place uh, should we need it. And, and we've done this before in the past. It's also always confusing, uh, I think, whenever we come back to doing it. So is that a good enough explanation for you, Alderman Barnhill? It is for me. Any other questions or comments from the board? Or are you ready to vote? Okay, we're ready to vote. Alderman Barnhill? Yes. Alderman Martin? Yes. Alderman Schroer? Yes. Alderman Speedy. Yes. Alderman McLendon. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. And Vice Mayor Berger. Yes. Passes unanimously. I now need a motion to go into executive session. So move. 
Thank you, Alderman Barnhill. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman Schroer. Ready to vote, Alderman Barnhill. I took that as a yes. Alderman Martin? Yes. Alderman Schroer? Yes. Alderman Speedy? Yes. Alderman Glendon? Alderman McClendon? Sorry, yes. Oh, thank you. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. And Vice Mayor Berger? Yes. Thank you. We are in executive session. So Angie will put us into our rooms. Are there any motions to consider from executive session? Mayor. Alderman McClendon. I move that the Board of Mayor and Alderman accept the executed settlement agreement proposed by the UDC in the City of Franklin versus UDC lawsuit. I second that. Appropriate motion, second. Any, any discussion? Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Martin. Yes. Alderman Schroer. Yes. Alderman Speedy. Yes. Alderman McClendon. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Vice Mayor Berger. Yes. Passes unanimously. Is there any other business to come before this body? If not, I would consider a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. Motions seconded by Alderman McClendon. Let's vote. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Martin. Yes. Alderman Schroer. Yes. Alderman Speedy. Yes. Alderman McClendon. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. And Vice Mayor. Yes. We are adjourned.